Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's Rise Eve session. Um, I'm very excited to introduce Tani Stefani from Ulaiftak Ministries, who will be sharing her heart and will be sharing her message today. Um, so before we start, I'm going to just um, start with prayer. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Abba Father, for this new morning that you have given us. Thank you for a night's nice rest where we can renew and refresh in you. We praise you that we can get together this morning as your Eves, as your daughters, and learn more from your word. Thank you for equipping Tani Stefani with your Ruach so that she can share the message that you want to share with us today, straight from her heart. Thank you also for the privilege that she um, is willing and able to come and share with us today. It's such a privilege that we can learn from each other so that we know that we never know everything of our Father, but we should always have a teachable heart. So thank you for this opportunity this morning. We ask that you bless the session, that you bless the technology, you bless the signals, and that you bless Tani Stefani and touch her mouth so that she might, may speak through you. We bless you, Father, and we praise you in the name of Yeshua, our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you, Baie dank, het is wonderlijk dat ek hier by julle kan wees vir ochend. Um, ek hoop allemaal kan ons skyfies mooi sien. I'm going to start immediately. Today we're going to, to look a little bit about the Ruach HaKodesh in Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11, 1, I'm going to read to you from the scripture version, the scriptures. The righteous reign of the branch, and a rod shall come forth from the stump of his eye, and a sprout from his root shall be fruitful. You will see in the speaker notes, I always put also the King James for you, so that for the ones who still read that. Now, before we can really start looking at um, the sevenfold ministry of the Ruach HaKodesh, we have to first look who is the root of Jesse. And to determine who is the one whose shoulders this sevenfold ministries will rest on. Jesse, or Isai in Hebrew, was David's father. This is a prophetic word that the Messiah should in due time arise from the house of David as that branch of Yahweh, which he has said, Isaiah 4, will be excellent and glorious. You can go and look up that verse yourselves because of time. This alone is an in-depth teaching on itself of the Ruach and the link to our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach. It is Isaiah 4 verse 2, that link. I want to also read to you from Luke 3 verse 21. And it came to be when all the people were immersed, Yeshua, that is Jesus Christ, also being immersed, and praying the heaven was opened, and the set apart spirit ascended in a bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my son, the beloved, and you I am well pleased. Now, if we look at Isaiah 11 verse 2, and I read again from the scriptures, from the Institute of Scripture Research, with the restored name, uh, set apart name of God in. That's why I love this translation. And you will find the link to it in the bibliography. The spirit of Yahweh, your type of high, and that is the four letters that depicts God's name, and I'll teach you later about that, shall rest upon, the spirit of God shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, 
the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God, and shall make him breathe in the fear of God, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge this poor, and shall decide with straightness for the meek ones of the earth, and shall strike the earth with a rod of his mouth, and slay the wrong with the breath of his lips. Yes, friends, that is a very comprehensive scripture. And if we look at the Ruach HaKodesh, the set apart spirit, like I, I like to call him, we will today just look at the Hebrew words of the meanings of the sevenfold spirit. Each of the seven ministries of the Ruach HaKodesh in how the spirit wants to work in us. We trust that the Ruach will teach us and open his word of truth for us today. Since the earliest centuries, plus minus 1,250 years before our Messiah, they used the picture language to communicate. They call it Paleo-Hebrew pictographs or ancient Hebrew. Yeah, sometimes they say it's a Phoenician alphabet. When we want to look at the Hebrew meaning, it is fascinating to see the ancient Hebrew pictographs of each word and how it can give us insight in the deeper meaning of the word. In the next slide, we will give you a chart of the alphabet, the alphabet, with the Paleo Hebrew and meaning of each letter so that you can do your own study. Excuse me. Because I couldn't hear now, Nick. Um, I think it was just someone that wasn't on mute, Dani Stefani. Can I just ask that everyone just put themselves on mute? Thank you very much. Sorry, Tony Stefani, um, you are on mute as well. Can you just unmute yourself? <laughs> okay. I mm hope -hmm. you can hear me now. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. I was there where I talked about the Phoenician alphabet. It is important to know that in Hebrew, each letter and each word can mean many different things. We make use of the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, which you will find also in the links. Um, in the bibliography, there you will find the links to the apps of Esword and MySword, where you can find that. If you have any questions, you can always contact me. Right, let's jump right into it. There you see the chart of the ancient Hebrew pictographs. And if it's the first time you hear about that, don't get a fright. It is a fascinating study. I've left three links there for you if you want to study more about this wonderful topic. So, let's continue. First of all, I just want to tell you about the meaning of the Ruach HaKodesh in Hebrew. We know that the word Ruach, I put the G there, because, um, you know, if you think of the CH sound in Hebrew, it, we pronounce it as a guttural G. So in Afrikaans, it's easy, but most people find it a struggle. It's not Ruach, but it's Ruach. The Ruach are mostly translated as breath or wind in ancient Hebrew. The pictographs of Ruach looks like that. 
it's interesting that we call it resh waf and get and the meaning is there's a leader who will connect us to a fence of boundaries that are intended to protect and provide sanctuary the ha stands for the and kodesh is there's the pictographs it is a kof a dalet and a shin and the meaning is Time to go through the door of Yahweh, of God himself, to be consumed by him. Isn't that amazing? There, I've summarized the seven ministries of the Ruach for you. And we will go to each one. And I hope you will enjoy it. And then lastly, we will also look at the menorah. First of all, we look at the Ruach of Yahweh, or God. In the King James translation, Lord, in Isaiah 2, is Yahweh. A-H-W-H. That is the tetragrammaton in Greek, and it's not really Greek. And the set apart name of our, our Father commonly pronounced as Yahweh, or some people pronounce it as Yahweh. It was the spirit of Yahweh that rested upon Yeshua, our Messiah. There's also a scripture in 1 Samuel 16, where Samuel was anointing David, or David in, in, in Hebrew, and the spirit of Yahweh came upon David, and from that day onwards, so many places in scripture we can read about the spirit of God, the spirit of Yahweh. Or our Messiah was conceived by the Holy Spirit in Matthew 1, you can read that, and was empowered to live as a perfect human man through that same spirit. In Luke 3 and Luke 4, you can also read about that. You will find all the references in the notes that we will send. This is the central part of the menorah candlestick from the tabernacle in the wilderness out of which all else proceed. All the branches stem from that center root. Wow, amazing is that. In Proverbs 4 verse 5, we read, get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget and do not turn away the words of my mouth. Now, in biblical Hebrew, it looks like that. Translated, it's chokman, which means wisdom or skill. And it comes from a primitive word, chakam, which also means to be wise, skillful or make wise. Wisdom at its core speaks of one's ability to se clearly separate the good from the bad, the right and the wrong, left and right and up and down. This we are able to do as we exercise true discipline, the discipline of separation. This can only be achieved through the Ruach and we must soak in his, our Father's words and in his presence to find his wisdom. There at the bottom, in the picture, you can see how the pictographs of wisdom look like. Chok man. We are built up in the master as we separate ourselves from the world, and we submit under the hand of our master, doing what his word instructs as it washes us and enables us to lift our hands to him in continual worship. Isn't that a wonderful explanation of wisdom? It's only in him that we can find wisdom and in his word. This second, I'm at the, yeah, the third one, the ru Ruach of Understanding, sorry. In Psalm 49 verse 3 says, My mouth speaks wisdom, and the meditation of my heart brings understanding in biblical Hebrew. It is the word baina, baina. It means understanding or knowledge. Perfectly, wisdom. A 
Primitive root is bene, which means to separate mentally or distinguish, generally understand, to attend, to consider, to be cunning, diligently, direct, discern, eloquent, inform, instruct, have intelligence, to know, to perceive, to teach, to think, to deal wisely. Friends, can you see how many meanings every one of the Hebrew words have? So it's to have the wisdom and the understanding we need to understand how comprehensive Hebrew is. And if we go to the, to the original words in which the scripture was written, it is wonderful to understand. Our Father wants to teach us through His Ruach to be wise with intelligence and with His perception. He wants to make us diligent so that we can deal wisely in a more and more corrupt world. The pictographs explain it. The house works the life of him who is to be praised. And we must work towards understanding the scriptures. And only his Ruach can help us with that. Number four, the Ruach of Counsel. Proverbs 1 verse 5, the wise one hears and increases learning, and the understanding one gets wise counsel. In biblical Hebrew, it looks like that. If you pronounce it or transliterate it in etza, etza, it means advice or prudence. Advisement, counsel, purpose. From a primitive root that says ya'atz. And it means to advise, to take advice, to consult, to give counsel, to determine and to devise, to guide. Excuse me. Our Abba Father wants to counsel us and give us advice in all life circumstances. How difficult it may be. Or how good he wants to determine and guide us in all good works. If we look at the ancient pictographs and the pictures, excuse me, <coughs> the hand and the eye and the whole body must submit to the good counsel and guidance of our Abba Father, the Ruach and Yeshua. Isn't it wonderful now to understand that he wants to counsel us? I've given you wonderful scriptures in the notes that I will share later. Number six of the ministries of the Ruach HaKodesh is the Ruach of Knowledge. In Proverbs 13 verse 6, it says, A scoffer shall seek wisdom, but find none. But knowledge is swift to him who has understanding. In biblical Hebrew, it looks like that. Dalet, iron, and tough. And translated, it's da'at. It means knowledge. To concern, to premeditate or premeditation. It also means skill. And it comes from the word yada, that means to know. Or to praise. As we meditate on the Torah day and night and God, the appointed times, we further equip, be equipped to God, the word of truth and the knowledge of the set apart one. People who disregard the need to God knowledge by casting aside the Torah of Elohim, that means the covenant or the whole scripture. They can never be prosperous in the walk of set-apartness and will perish due to the lack of knowledge. Being carefully guarded in their mouths for the Torah, that is the first five books, or Abba's covenant, is to be in our hearts and in our mouths. The ancient pictograph says, 
a door and an eye and a cross. At the door of appointment, we see and we look intently into the covenant. Isn't that amazing? The fifth, um, the Ruach of Might and Power, I just also want to stress that some translations say power, some say might. In Psalm 18, verse 32, it says, It is Yahweh God who girds me with strength and make my way perfect. In Isaiah 40, it says, But those who wait on God, Yahweh, renew their strength. They rise up in on the wings like eagles. They run and are not weary. They walk and do not faint. In ancient Hebrew or in Hebrew, it is Halil. It is Hayot Lamet, which means strength, efficiency, wealth, army, ability, capability, or excellence. Also, to, in, in, in the ancient Hebrew or a root word, it says to be firm and strong, to endure, to prosper. This leader, Ruach HaKodesh, wants to demonstrate this power in our life all along. In Yosha 1, our father commanded him and us to be strong and courageous. He also said, do not be afraid, nor be discouraged, for Yahweh your Elohim, God our God, is with you wherever you go. It is wonderful to think that the Ruach will give us strength and power and might if we don't have it. We can only operate in his power. The pictographs is a fence and a hand and a staff, and it means to separate and build up, to submit under and serve the shepherd. And we know who our shepherd is. The seventh and the last One is the fear of Yahweh, or the fear, or awe, oh, I like to use the word awe oh, instead of fear. In Deuteronomy 10 verse 12, and now Israel said, say, Father God, Father God, what is Yahweh, your Elohim, asking of you but to fear God? your Elohim, to walk in his ways and to love him and to serve him. Serve him, Yahweh your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being. To God his commands and God his laws, which I command you today. In biblical Hebrew, it's Yarei, or a primitive root that means to fear, to morally revere. To cause it to be frightened. But we really don't want to talk about frightening. Be frightened of God. Just be in reverence. Lately we see in life that people have lost their fear of God, of Yahweh. Like we explained, we do not need to tremble each time we think or speak of our Father. Rather we need to look at him in reverence and awe. In the pictograph, it's a hand and a head and an ox, or strength. It is the hand to work to see the utmost of the leader, our father, with strength and authority and all. So we must look at him in this wonderful, amazing, um, if we look at the, um, the wonderful nature outside, we can just be in reverence of him. In Colossians 1 verse 15, the sun, it says the sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all his creation. And Psalm 111 verse 10, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. All those doing them have good understanding. I see we have only six minutes left. I'm going to... Rush on, you can read the rest on your own. It is just the, the Hebrew words for all is hira, and it's wonderful meaning. Now we want to look at the menorah. Exodus 25, verse 31 says, And thou shalt make a lampstand of pure 
gold. And we know that lampstand with the knobs and all the branches have little lights in it. It serves as a copy of a shadow of the heavenly things because God told Moses to make it, to represent his presence in their midst. The Hebrew Bible mentions the menorah 42 times. It was formed in the likeness of budding almond blossoms. And we know that seven is a significant number in scripture. As we know, seven is God's number of completion. But despite the plurality of the lamps, it might one is made of one piece. Isn't that wonderful? In Acts, we see that flames of fire was seen during the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh. In Acts 2, verse 3, it says, And they appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and it settled on each one of them. And they were all filled with the set apart spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Ruach or the Spirit gave them to speak. And there you can see the beautiful golden menorah that represents the seven spirits of the Ruach, spirits of the Holy Spirit. In Revelation, we read, Revelation verse 1, John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you for him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits before his throne, from the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God, of Yahweh. How wonderful that Father gave us the dove and the flames, the seven spirits, so that we can have a a better understanding of his Ruach. It is a teaching on its own, but I hope you've learned something today. In the last slide, what I've done, I've put some questions there for you. I hope you will be able to answer it in your own Bible study. And if you want the answers, the real answers, you can contact me via my email. I've also put it in the um, speaker notes, what, which we will share with you on the groups. Thank you, Lucia. I want to commend you for this study we had to rush through, but we made it in time, and I hope in the end you all have learned something small and that I've stirred a yearning for you to study. More of the Ruach HaKodesh, our wonderful Father Spirit. Thank you, Lucia. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tony Stefani, for coming to share with us this morning. Um, yes, you shared so many insights with us. And for myself, I truly feel that I just want to go back to all of the notes just to get a deeper understanding of everything. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I hope everyone was as blessed with it as I was. Thank you for um, all the preparation, all the work, and all the praise that has gone into this morning. Um, I know that you truly had this desire in your heart to speak only from the Spirit and nothing from yourself. So thank you so much, Tani Stefani. Thank you. And thank you for having me. It was such a privilege. It was a big privilege. Thank you, everyone. You must have a blessed week. Um, Bless you all. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>